Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. The unkillable Halloween monster for your Dungeons and Dragons adventures. The Halloween one-shot Dungeons and Dragons adventure season needs a fearsome creature and I'm here to give it to you. Here are some terrifying unkillable monsters for your Dungeons and Dragons game. Forget about the usual high level monsters or your standard horrors. Players have already seen ghosts, zombies, werewolves, skeletons, mummies, witches, your vampires, your scarecrows and the Frankenstein monster. These monsters will leave a lasting impression on your players over Halloween. I'm going to give you the Banshee, the Flaming Skull, the Night Witch and the Revenant as examples of how you can really spice things up. The Banshee is an undead remnant of a woman or a female elf blessed with great beauty who has failed in life by corrupting or controlling others. A Banshee can also be a fairy spirit that predicts and warns a family or a person of their death. Here are some examples uh, in terms of adventure hooks you could use in your adventure. An old woman in a village has reported the sound of a screaming woman outside her house but can never find the source of it. The, par the party is called on to actually assist. Now the party finds a beautiful gem-covered comb on the road, not far from the old lady's house. The adventure goal in this case is the party must investigate the old lady's property to discover that a banshee is visiting the house at night in search of a beautiful comb it desires, and it needs it back. That lost jeweled comb must be returned to the banshee for it to leave. And it's as simple as that. Complications with a Banshee. If you just look at the Dungeons and Dragons 5e Monster Manual, you might assume that a Banshee can be killed with magic or even mundane weapons. But you would be wrong. Exorcism is the only way to destroy a Banshee permanently. A Banshee curse cannot be broken. And the reason being, it is only the spirit that can remove its own curse. And unfortunately, it's unable to do so. Now this is only one example and concept of the Banshee, but this is one story you could tell very, very easily. The Flaming Skull is an intelligent undead, fashioned from the remains of a dead wizard, that retains all of its magical spellcasting powers, or a lot of them. The Flaming Skull is usually created to protect a hidden treasure hoard, a secret chamber, or a specific individual by dark spellcasters. The adventure hook is very simple. The recently dead local wizard has been dug up, or the bodies of local wizards have been dug up, and they've been pulled out of the cemetery, their bodies scattered around, and all of their heads have gone missing. The adventure goal for your party is as follows. The party must investigate this morbid event to discover that an evil witch is transforming the wizard's skulls into flaming skulls. Her intentions are not good. The witch intends to destroy the people who have banished her from the small village and take control of it. The complications of a flaming skull are as follows. Flaming skulls are hard to kill and rejuvenate after one hour if destroyed, unless you sprinkle them with holy water. If you don't sprinkle them with holy water, they come back. You can also use the remove curse or dispel magic spell. Uh, it can be cast on the flaming skull while it is laying uh, uh, destroyed and that will permanently lay it to rest. The Night Hag is a fiendish nightmare that trades evil souls to demons and devils to ensure the blood war never ends. It's one of my favourite monsters. The adventure hook in this case is a small isolated town has children and babies going missing. While an unusually large number of people in that town have been passing away in their sleep, and others are reporting dreadful nightmares. The adventure goal for the party is as follows. The party needs to investigate the reason for the children's abduction, why the local townsfolk are having nightmares, and why there is an increased mortality rate within the town, why so many people are dying. Then they need to stop the night hag from stealing children, killing those children, grinding up their bodies and making them into meat pies to sell to the lo local townsfolk, which is quite horrible. They also need to try and rescue a human baby that will be devoured by the night hag, which will then give birth to a new night hag. We don't need more. One is more than enough. 
Now the complications with the Night Hag are as follows. The Night Hag never needs to fight anything. It can just enter the ethereal plane and attack from there if it wanted to. Night Hags project nightmares into their victims' minds while in the ethereal plane and then they drain their life from the creature while they're straddled on the creature and do so while they're actually sleeping. And they can do that until they're completely dead if they wanted to. Now, the only way you can really deal with a night hag is to have some way of seeing them in the ethereal plane. So something like the true seeing spell would be the best way to approach this. Make sure there's some sort of scroll or make sure the party already have access to the spell. And this is the only way they're really going to catch that night hag. The Revenant is an intelligent, unstoppable spirit, driven by revenge against someone who has betrayed them while they were alive, resulting in their death. A Revenant soul returns to the living world to possess a corpse as many times as it takes to exact its revenge on the living nemesis. Now the adventure hook are as follows. I'm going to give you two, and you pick the one you like the most. One. Or all of the player characters have wronged an NPC or non-player character by killing them and looting their body. And it's resulted in the party being hunted by the Revenant or at least one member within that party. Or you could select a different way of doing this and this is the second adventure hook. The party is assigned to protect an NPC or non-player character or a lord or noble person who is being pursued by an assassin that never seems to die. The adventure goal in this case is to stop or appease the Revenant's blood path by, um, before it kills the party. This is just the adventure goal for the first adventure hook. The second one would be simply to find out why the Revenant is hunting down the NPC or non-player character or this lord and rectify that betrayal. Now there are complications for dealing with a Revenant and they are many. The only way to permanently destroy a Revenant is for one year to pass. They can only exist for one year and then they must complete their goal or they cease to exist. You could also use the wish spell while the revenant has no body and send its soul to the afterlife. You could also just let the revenant complete its goal so it is laid to rest. In the case of your adventuring party you might find that you may have to raise your uh, party member from, um, from death once they've been killed or if you're going to let them complete their task and take out this NPC or Lord then you may have to raise them up later on if you want to actually get them back on their feet and, and sort of uh, correct the problem if that's the way that needs to be corrected. There's another way you can actually deal with this and that is restore the Revenant's life. This might actually work. Now the only way it's actually in a revenant and a major threat is because it can never die. But if you restore its life, which you've taken from it or somebody else has taken from it, then you have kind of corrected the problem. Now a lot of these ideas are certainly taken from the Terminator movie and even the Ghost Rider character, and you're welcome to try and apply them in your game. Now I hope this was useful to you. I have a live stream that goes into far more detail on this. If you want to check that out, you're welcome to. If you like my stuff, then I have hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters that cover every aspect of Dungeons & Dragons and Dungeons & Dragons 5e. If you want to support the channel so I keep doing video content like this, you can through Patreon, the Amazon affiliate links down in the description, the merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos, or just watch my videos, that's fine too. Make sure to do the usual YouTube things like share, like and subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and I go live every week and when I publish new videos that are edited and hey till next time, keep rolling those 20s.